Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning this uh, Saturday morning. It is, I guess, noon in Ghana where uh, a Winnie's at. But uh, this is another live stream of the uh, search for the guru. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oops, my bad, my bad. Okay, sorry about that. So this is another uh, live stream, the search for Uhuru. Uh, I have Brother Owini um, Baba with us again, and we're going to be discussing the uh, we're going to be discussing improving the African economy, African economy, African economy. Uh, just got back from Senegal on Sunday. You know, had a great time. Actually, I head to Ghana on Thursday. So I'm looking forward to Ghana, and I'm definitely going to link with uh, Brother Owini. Uh, let's get some more more people in the chat room. I know it's early uh, Saturday morning. It's uh, it's about 7.30, 7.49 a.m. here in uh, Atlanta. So no, I know some oh, of my, okay. yeah, I know some of my West Coast people will probably uh, still sleep. But yeah. if you are up, thank you for coming on. Doug, I see you in the chat room. Red Fox, thank you. Thank you so much. But uh, yeah, so we're just going to be chopping it up about the improving the economy of Africa. Uh, people in the chat room, if you have any questions, please post them. We want to make this as interactive as uh, as possible. So Turkey, what's going on? Everything is good. Back from Senegal. Came back Sunday, but uh, had for Ghana on Thursday, uh, Thursday night, Turkey Day. So I leave for Ghana on Turkey day, Turkey night, I guess. Uh, flying Delta directly from JFK to uh, to Opera. So I'm looking forward to that. I finally got my freaking visa from Ghana. Mm. Uh, yeah, well, Weenie, they, they tried to say that they couldn't find my passport when I shipped it to the embassy in, uh, mm. in, in Washington, D.C. So this is, mm. a, if you guys have not, if you guys have never seen a visa from uh, Ghana, this is how it looks like right here. That's, uh, y'all can see that. That's a visa from Ghana. You know, usually sometimes I put your picture on it. They ask for two passport size photos, and I was thinking they're going to do it like uh, this is an OS one from Senegal right here. Uh, this is back when you needed a visa to go to Senegal, but now we have a U.S. passport. You don't need one. Uh, let's see here. This is my uh, this is my visa from Mali right here. You know, usually they'll place your picture on the uh, on the visa. And then, like I said, one of my books, so I have two, I pretty much have two passports right here. Uh, one was mm -hmm. completely filled, and I couldn't, um, mm -hmm. uh, the Ghanaian embassy couldn't place their visa in it. So I had to go last minute and get a new one, which they placed their visa mm -hmm. in my new one. So my old one is completely filled. It's, so, so yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but brother, uh, oh, yeah. go ahead and uh, take it away. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, it's been a while, and it's good to be back on here with uh, the brother uh, Dynast. And you know, it's good what we're trying to foster here, uh, community, and so on. And uh, you know, pretty much when we uh, started these podcasts and discussions, uh, we've been you know surgically or as much as we could you know, try to zoom in on areas where we can practically improve ourselves and uh, to do it on our own and not sit down and, and wish and come do it for us. And so in line with that, uh, we would like to see some action. You know, uh, this is not about rhetoric and, and getting on here and, and talking and talking every day. Uh, we want to see, you know, the awakening uh, transform into action. In line with that, uh, we want to situate it within the context of improving the African economy. And I have to uh, be clear on what, what I mean by African economy. I'm talking about the global African economy. You know, and uh, by this, I, I am referring to how the African community worldwide can better a situation. Because as we may be aware, uh, we are the, the single people on the planet 
who are richer than any group of people by nature of our natural who are the poorest that's an irony right and 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 that's that's not a coincidence some people you know certain people have ensured that they have uh co-opted and corrupted some of our leaders to help them to keep us like this so that they can keep off of our backs and we have got to change that and and the game changer is about action uh i can give you several instances where rhetoric never ever did anything uh you know the the million man march you know the reason it was so successful is because you know the the leaders back then they put you know they stepped their foot down you know took to the streets and and demanded action i i, I would, I would let, let me uh, let me jump in real quickly when you're not uh, sorry to cut you off so john uh john john Harry clark um he he and let me get your thoughts on this he disagreed with the million man march because his side his um uh, the reason why his argument was that okay so we get a million black men to come to washington dc uh, but that mm. money is being circulated primarily amongst uh non-black institutions whether it be hotels restaurants uh mm -hmm. so at the end of the day yeah. it isn't uh black people who are benefiting or circulating their money amongst each other but it is non-black who benefit the most How, mm -hmm. what, are you, what are your thoughts on that I, I agree with him totally, but you know we have to look at this from two angles. We have to look at direct effect and the indirect effects. And Professor Clark is 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 a, you know he's a brilliant man. He's looking at the the entire benefit. Two T, uh, but some of us are looking at what what directly is. You get me. So uh, in the absence of you know, African businesses and, and organizations and so on and so forth. Uh, whenever we have a mass movement, you know, I don't even call the Million Man March an organized movement. It's just a mass movement. Whenever we have these movements, uh, uh, because we don't have the businesses movements, obviously we are not the ones going to benefit from the indirect effects of it. And uh, Professor, on, on that score, but what I'm trying to, my point is, you know, if we're trying to achieve something, we need to stop the rhetoric. That's all I'm saying. You see, uh, we, we've talked enough, and we've been talking for centuries now. So we don't, we don't, we don't need, we know what we must do. And uh, whenever our early leaders put their foot down and started doing the things that they, they should, needed to be doing, things started moving. We, got, we, we have gotten this far. The, 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 the African diaspora in this struggle in America and in other parts of the world got this far because certain leaders and certain people took action. They didn't just talk. We need to you know, cultivate that and, and understand that it's only action that gets things done. And no matter how small the action, you know, it's not about a big, you know, action and so on. Every individual has a contribution to make. Mm -hmm. Because if you, if in your area, for instance, if you start, if you start an African restaurant mm -hmm. and, uh, First of all, your target is going to be the Africans, whether they, they were born in America or they, they came over there from Africa recently. They are the people who are going to be your first target, your target market. And if they decide that they are going to come there and, and eat, even if they're not going to do it every day, you know, they're, they're going to, you know, try it out every weekend and so on and so forth. And you know, you, you put the whole business marketing idea into it, you know, it should sell. Right. But if, if the Africans make up their mind that, you know, that that's not, you know, it has nothing to do with them, then it's a problem because they go into other people's culture mm -hmm. 
and eat there. Correct. But they don't eat with the African, you know, cuisine. And and there's something wrong with that. And that's why I say that every individual has a role to play. We play a role in our situation, whether we see it or not. We can we can decide to play an active role or we can decide to play a passive role. Now most of us, most of us Africans are now playing passive roles in our everyday situation. And that's the problem because a passive role means that you are not conscious of what you're doing. And 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 when we do that indirectly, we, we work against ourselves. All right. What about what about the um, I would say the Black Americans who feel as if Africans, when they come over to America, that they don't contribute to I would say what's the best way? They segregate themselves from Black Americans and don't contribute to the uh, Black American economy, and, and vice versa. Uh, what are, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, that's why I'm saying that uh, there's there's a a certain amount of truth to that, but that's not intentional. Like I said, it's, it's either conscious or it's not. Mm-hmm. You get me? Now, I'll give you a scenario. If you come, like you're going to come to Ghana, right? Yeah, if next week, come, I'll, be, I'll, I'll land next Friday, Friday morning. Exactly. So you come to Ghana, hmm? mm-hmm. and we have restaurants in Ghana. Uh, right. You, you sit at a restaurant, and the restaurant is owned by a Lebanese, right? First, mm-hmm. from the word go, you, you took an American flight, which means you gave your money to somebody. Of course, that's your country, you know, by the way. So it's, it's not bad. But you get here and you, you give your first money to a Lebanese right. who owns a, a hotel. Now, you maybe buy some food in the hotel and you still give him more money. And, you know, you move on to board a bus or a plane, whatever, and the bus is owned by, you know, another Lebanese or something or Chinese right. and so on. And, and, and so on and so forth. So at the end of the day, you are not consciously giving to the African, the Ghanaian, you know, economy directly, right? You may be contributing to the GDP of Ghana, but GDP as a measure of, of uh, economic growth is deceiving because GDP includes all, all the, 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 the assets, you know, the pro- production, including those that belong to foreigners who live in the country. Mm-hmm. You look at GDP, a huge chunk of that goes, is exported. They take the money out. They don't wow. leave it in Ghana. Right, so you may be contributing to the GDP of Ghana, but you're not contributing to Ghana directly. So, but somebody will accuse you of not, you know, contributing enough, and it wouldn't be your fault because, you know, we have not set up the services, you know, and, and goods and so on to benefit from your trip, for instance. Right. Even if we have, we, we, we have only done so little. And we get, in terms of percentages, maybe less than 10%. Because you come to Ghana and you make a phone call, your money goes to MTN. MTN does not belong to Ghana. And, and, and you, you, you make you use Vodafone, Vodafone is British. Mm-hmm. You know, and so that, that is at the heart of the problem is, have we set up businesses, no matter how small they are, but I, I'm for big business, you know, for, for my own reasons, but have we set up businesses in a way that will tap from our immediate African community who, you know, have an affinity to us and want to, you know, shop with us and so on and so forth. We have not done that. And, and, and vice versa. When, we, when some some of uh, the Africans come over there, that's the problem. Is we're not in control of anything. You see, so immediately 
when a person goes out to spend money, he's giving it to somebody else. And the least he can do, the most he can do for an African community in the diaspora is to make a donation. But, but how much can he give? You see? So the problem is that we have not set up... Look, if you look at uh, the concept of the Chinatown, mm -hmm. the first customers of Chinatown are Chinese. Right. They, they sustain it. Other people can go there, you know, out of curiosity and they want to try Chinese food, they want to try this, they want to see this, they want to see that. But the people who patronize Chinatown the most are the Chinese themselves. Right. We're not, we're not doing a similar thing for ourselves. That's the problem. You know, we have to patronize our own. And there's nothing wrong with that. Every group of people who come to America, they keep a close-knit community. Correct. And, and business with each other openly, not secretly, openly. And, and, and there's no outcry of racism. Right. Okay. Which I want to, which I have, this, let me ask you this question. So I got into a debate with a guy. Uh, mm. I'm a firm believer that you could be six. Let's start with the Chinese. You go into any Chinatown here in America. Okay. Mm. You walk in, you see the Chinese letters everywhere. They have their Chinese banks everywhere. I mean, you know, it's Chinatown. Same thing with Korean town. Uh, if you go into any predominantly Jewish area, they have everything written in Hebrew. And they're unapologetically Hebrew, they're unapologetically Korean, they're unapologetically Chinese. For some odd reason, mm -hmm. uh, black people have this mindset that, say we set up a little Africa or we have a community that's unapologetically black, that that's a poverty mindset, that uh, you're, you're, you're going to be excluding uh, non-black people. But I've, I never said that. Anybody can shop with you. I e. okay. example the Chinese, you know, they're unapologetically Chinese, but you know, I might go eat some Chinese food. But for some reason, the yeah. black community, there a lot of black business owners are afraid, I guess, to be unapologetically black or unapologetically African. How do you feel about that? Yeah, it's unfortunate. It's tragic. I mean, it's tragic to to be ashamed of being yourself. Right. You know, and uh, all these uh, mindsets that we have built, they're misguided. There's, there's absolutely no substance in, in, in what that person says with, with all due respect. But uh, you, you can't say that. I mean, to think that you are defeating yourself or, you know, you're portraying poverty and so on. Let me, let me give a scenario. Every culture people have their low side and high side. Right. There's no culture that is 100% all good and perfect and so on. Now, most people, because of the conditioning, and, 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 and part of the conditioning, it's a continuous thing. And that's why the other day I was talking about what is going on in, in the African mind is there is always, and that's why sometimes I don't watch movies these days. Because when you watch a movie, there are these subtle, subtle uh, themes in the movies. Subtle. Subtle in a way that you, your, your conscious mind does not pick up on them immediately, but your subconscious. So in my view, there are two minds. There's the conscious that knows what it's doing and it's, it's monitoring itself, and the subconscious. The subconscious, somebody can talk to your subconscious mind and use that to control you and mm -hmm. control your and that's what is happening to the African community. People are using every means, the media, music, you know, whatever they can lay their hands on to demean Africans and to make us accept a subservient position in the world. Mm -hmm. they do that on a continuous basis. They do that on a day-to-day on a -day basis and they use all of these avenues uh, they use entertainment, they use whatever they can lay their hands on, education, whatever. Because if we do not ta tackle this head on, our children and our children's children are going to sink deeper into low self-esteem.
Mm-hmm. And why think less of yourself than you are ready for pickup? Anybody, anybody can, can, can mess you up because you don't have any confidence in yourself and you think that you are nothing compared to other people. You see? So that, that's a, a big problem and we need to come out of that. So for somebody to think that having uh, a, a, a community and calling it Africa town or whatever town, you know, representative of Africa and black people, you know, uh, it's, it's down. I don't, I don't get it because we're not, we're not promoting negativity. We're promoting positive African things. That's, that's, that's what we're, we're putting out in the world. Everybody wants to, you know, uh, uh, sell out what is good about their culture, you know, and bring it out and so on. So, and, and is this person trying to say that Africa has nothing good to offer the world? I, I don't know if he's saying that. He's just saying that, um, you know, being, I guess, unapologetically, unapologetically black in the marketplace is a poverty mindset because he feels as if you're going to uh, exclude non-blacks or keep non-blacks from doing business with you. But that hasn't stopped the Chinese, yeah. the Arab. I mean, you got to think about it. The Arabs, huh? they come to a, worldwide. You, you rarely see them in business suits. They wear their indigenous, you know, the head wrap, whatever you want to call it, the jalabia. Um, for business. Yeah, for business. What? But no, here, the mindset sure. is if you do business, you have to wear a suit and tie. Mm. You, know, mm. so. you know, that's unfortunate because uh, uh, we, 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 the African community, we're the only people who we do business with everybody except ourselves. Okay. Exactly. See, and, and, that, and there's something wrong with that. I mean, you, you, you're comfortable shopping, you know, with everybody, but when you get to, and that's another thing about us. When we deal with Africa and we, we deal with African things, we right. We 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 have no for ourselves. We we we, we think every cheap and when and of cost to other products, then we have our mindset or African Africa is cheap. And that, that is also a misconception. You see, because it depends on what you're dealing with. If you're, if you're preparing, uh, you know, food, you're running a restaurant, an African restaurant, uh, uh, that's, that's serious business. And uh, people to be willing to pay uh, oh, Winnie, oh, Winnie. Enough oh, for oh, you Winnie. to say something. Oh, Winnie. Oh, Winnie, you're starting to you're starting to go in and out a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah, how's it now? That's better. Go ahead. We we must be willing to to spend equally and not discriminate against ourselves. We're discriminating against ourselves because we we walk into an African business and we want to shortchange the African business and kill it. But we, we go to other people and we don't have the guts to even bargain with them. Right, exactly. You see? And, and, and we always condescend with our own. And, and there's something wrong with that. And that's why I'm saying it's not a coincidence. It's because of the conditioning. Every day there is a conditioning. And people, people Africans, are, are, you know, we are forced to accept an inferior, inferiority, you know, situation, an inferior position. And subservient position, and we were comfortable there. We want pieces, and pieces and crumbs from everybody else, and we don't want to build our own. Mm. And, and when somebody tries to build something African, we don't want to patronize it because some of us, some of us think that we should have been the ones doing it. And so, you know, once we're not the ones, we we don't want to help the brother or the sister make it. I mean, there's something wrong with it. That. Is. You see. So we need we need to reconscientize ourselves and, and relook at ourselves if we want to be taken serious as a people. And that's why uh, I don't get into all these debates about respect for Africa and all of that. Uh, respect is earned. Right. 
you know we don't we don't need begging people to respect us if you if you run your your own and you 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 you're doing the things you should be doing people are going to respect you you, know, you don't you don't have to ask them to respect you so all of these you know are, are negative mindsets that we we hold against that pulls our business initiative down you know is it, it's got to stop you see okay we we go ahead go ahead mm -hmm. now, i was going to ask you this what about um you have a lot of so during a couple of years ago uh there was a movement to boycott black friday okay because mm -hmm. a lot of obviously these businesses that we were boycotting weren't speaking up in regards to the uh, shooting of unarmed black men uh, no. The argument was that, okay, even though the majority of these businesses are non-black owned, you still have a lot of black people who work for these businesses, so you're hurting them too. What are, you, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, you see, what we are doing is we are, because we have, we have not organized ourselves and, and, and put ourselves in uh, a position to demand we are holding people to ransom you see and that's that's just basically it we are grabbing our straws you know just just trying to use whatever means we can to 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 make the system you know respond to our needs right and and uh, it's not always going to work it's you know it's temporary look uh all this uh brutality and behavior against black people in America we read about every day is not going to stop until mm -hmm. we get our act together. Sorry, it's not. Right. You know, it's not. And and until we get our act together, uh, we're we're always gonna, you know, be the laughing stock of the world and and we we are tagged as violent and uh, uh you know from all of this right as if other people don't crime you know and 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 we always have a bullseye on our back right uh, uh it's it's it's, it's going to change and the only way it's going to change is if we get our act together and run our own business and provide for our community we have a a lot of our, our young people hung up you know and, and 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 stuck in this you know stupid you know drama in the sand because we have failed to provide a place for them in our community and, and, and they're very confused hey and uh, it's not oh, we, need, we need go I'm, I'm gonna step away for like 30 seconds uh just keep on going i gotta get my son's soccer jersey give me one second but go ahead yes so uh Pretty much, uh, we we have got to look at ourselves uh, in the economic sense because economic freedom is true freedom. Uh, you know that is what controls. And if we are going to break this blockade, you know, economic blockade, we're going to have to do it by you know uh, instilling some level of in ourselves and uh if we don't do that it's not gonna work you don't you, you your first start of business should be your family members and your community members should want you to succeed uh but if you have family members and members of your own community who are by extension your own extended family and so on if you have those people passing your shop and going to other people's shops and, and then turn around and uh, uh, insult, insult us, uh, we dare you know, out our respect all of that. All of that rhetoric, you see? So, uh, opportunity, I'd like to ask, uh, people in the chat room if you have uh, run to run a business 
you know, because it's all about action, then you should put it out there. Give the support it can, you know, uh, basically by patronizing your goods and services. You see? So we would uh, about uh, uh, Winnie, you're, you're starting to go in and, you're starting to go in and out a little bit again. Oh, okay. Uh, how's it now? That's better now. That's better. All right. So, what, what was that? Um, yeah. what was that last statement you made to the to the chat room. So we would like to know uh, what people are doing. You know, if you okay. Okay. you know that you're running or you're so forth, you should put it out and and and, and let the people that are around you. Uh, uh, come and do business with you, you know, and uh, you know it's not it's not always perfect because people expect you know the best service and so on. It it makes sense, but you know uh, sometimes we we have to make improvements here and there and so on, and eventually it'll happen. So uh, does anybody have a business that they're running that uh, needs uh, support? of customers and so on. Anybody in the chat room? Uh, you have a business that needs support that you want to place the link or the info here in the um, chat room? You know, of course, me, myself, I have Um uh, You know, the projects I do in Africa as far as the documenting, um, I guess that would be considered a business. Uh, also, too, uh, I mean, the platform that me and Owini have uh, would be considered a business as far as bringing the the information uh, to you all. Because, I mean, that takes a lot. It's a lot of work. I mean, as far as going over, documenting, finding people to interview, uh, finding people to, to who want to open up. Because uh, I have some stuff planned for Ghana when I go in regards to really focusing in on Ghanaian Ghana real estate. Uh, because from my understanding, Accra now is like the most expensive city in Africa, which I think is ridiculous. Um, yes. And, and because of, uh, I'm trying to think of the word I want to use, uh, is it affordable for the, is the capital, is, is living in the capital city of Ghana, Accra, affordable for the, I would say, the native or indigenous Ghanaian? And from what I'm getting, the answer is no. So I'm going to be uh, really talking and going in on that. Uh huh. Uh huh. So, yeah. Stuff like that. Uh, Tech Nubian says he does um, telecom, but locally. Mm. 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 Yeah. So, so. Uh, uh, but, 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 like, but, but, what exactly? Oh, hold, on, hold on one second, Chima. You're the uh, you're the the pastry chef, are you? Chima, you're a pastry chef, are you? And Chima, if you're a pastry chef, put your link in the chat room, and um, you know people want to cater, get some some desserts or whatever cater. There you go. So mm -hmm. put your link in the chat room. Yeah, Chima, put your. I mean, you got a website or I think you got an Instagram. Go ahead and put it in the chat room so if people want to buy food or. You know, want to buy some some desserts? I mean, they they could come to you. So make sure you put your info in the uh, chat room. So make sure you do that. Um, so so yeah. So uh, just to add, uh, you know. Because what 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 uh, Dynas is doing now, uh, there are so many avenues for business in this. Uh, there's the travel and tour avenue, uh, where you could uh, go talk to people, you know, based on your experience, uh, you know, in America who are willing to travel to Africa, and you can arrange trips to pretty much any country in Africa that people are interested in. Uh, you know, for a fee, of course. And let's be let's be honest about some things. There's nothing wrong with uh, paying something little to a brother or a sister, you know, 
who runs a, a travel and tour business. You see, because right. if other people were, were doing the same service, they weren't going to do it for free. You see, so you know that there's nothing wrong with that as long as you know it's reasonably negotiated. Uh, you know, so that can be arranged. Uh, you know, uh, like when you're coming to Ghana and so on. Uh, if 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 some people want to uh, come along, it should be arranged. You know. And uh, it's all, you know, part of building, you know, the, the overall African economy. But uh, like what I've been pushing for a while now, uh, you know, and, and we're, we're going to bring out the, the grand plan, uh, you know, is the one dollar project. And, uh, you know, we're, we're not going to stop. We're going to keep pushing it until it sinks. Uh, and people can relate to it is uh, we need to create a, a, a system that people can openly trust. Okay, so people in the chat room, if you're, if you're in the Baltimore, people watching this, if you're in the Baltimore area, make sure you reach out to Chima Madu. Uh, it's a newly ice cream, is his uh, Instagram and Chima Madu, C H I M A M A D U. Now, Chima, you make what, organic ice cream, I believe, or? Well, he'll, he'll answer. And then Jamelia does import-export, and her email is ileayo at gmail.com. Um, mm. Turkey, no, I don't think, um, you, I don't, in, in order to have a gun in Africa, in the majority of African countries, you have to have a very good reason, so. It isn't like here or in America or in Georgia where you, I could literally walk in to any gun store and get a, a Uzi <laughs> in 15 minutes. So yeah, it's different over there. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Like literally, oh. like literally, I could go to any gun store right now if it's open and get any type of assault rifle in under, I can pick it out. I can pick it out and have it in under 15, 20 minutes. Walk out with it. It is not That's like that uh, in Africa. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, you know, pretty much. So what we're what we're trying to push here, uh, you know, on our side, and and this is this is what we've been you know trying to say for a long time is. Uh, Collectively, we can raise the funds to 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 expand already existing small businesses and and, and to engage in big business. There's no reason why we're not doing it. You know, are we under a spell or what? Uh, you know, what we're trying to do now to promote the one dollar project or program and, uh, to keep it running. And uh, you know, that's, that's pretty much our contribution to the overall black community. And uh, you know, we can, most, most people can afford a dollar a month. Most people, most people can afford it, you know? So it's a matter of uh, how is the money going to uh, be collected and what are the, the, you know, the security systems, the transparency systems that ensure that, uh, you know, the money goes to the right purposes. And that's where, you know, everything is supposed to be open. It's supposed to be, you know, a monthly publishing of the, 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 the account statements, you know, and, and, and not a penny can be withdrawn without the consent of, you know, so many, you know, and, and these signatories uh, cannot also uh, go ahead and sign anything without informing their constituents, you see. So we can, I mean, we're human beings and, and, and we can think around how to make a, create a fail safe you know, uh, or, or an infallible uh, uh, system. This everybody.
I'm not saying, you know, we can't manage it and, and you know, it's it's going to fall apart and, and there are going to be scandals and what have you. It's not, it's, it's, it's not going to happen. You see? So on the, on the African continent, this is, we're pushing this agenda and, and we're, we're, we're laying the foundations to try to, to get it off, you know, in a, in a grand way across the, virtually all the countries uh, right now we're, we're trying to bridge the language barrier Ghana is English and other uh, languages here and you go you know just across uh, into Togo it's, it's French and they have their languages as well and so on and so forth so all of these have to be taken into consideration uh, but there's nothing that's going to stop this and we're going to uh, keep pushing for it because it's needed. And uh, we have, we do have the ability. Owini, you there? Owini. To invest in big business and to improve our economy. Okay. Uh, I know, I know, Doug. Doug, what exactly do you do? I know Doug wants to, Doug wants to import fish from uh, Malawi. I, I know, is it? Yeah, you there? You there, uh, Hello? Owini? Owini. Owini. Okay. Hello? Uh, Doug, uh, one of the moderators, and a shout out to Doug. Uh, Doug, what is, your, what is your business? What do you do locally? But in the future, I'll be looking for importing aquatic livestock from Malawi and Lake Victoria. Doug, what exactly do you do locally right now? Yeah. Yeah, so. So, yeah, so that's what Doug wants to do. But, um, so this idea, yeah, it has to develop to where uh, you work out, you know, the, 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 the profit margins and you, you make projections. And, uh, in order to do this, you you know calculate the estimated expenditure, like what it takes to get a fish or you know a, a, a standard quantity from Malawi into America, and and you're going to have to hello, yeah, right here, yeah, and you're going to have to uh, figure out if you're going to have to peg it at a price that is, is uh, appealing enough to the American market. And you're going to also have to uh, consider in the market. Uh, so all these are considerations that, you know, have to go into the business idea of, you know, importing fish, you see? And what what is happening, you see, uh, is that a lot of you know international concerns who do you know they they export you know food and other things from Africa they they trace to the source and right. they invest they invest in developing the the products and through this investment they reduce their cost reduce the cost of buying the products you see, and uh, they will uh, break even and make a profit, and what have you. So, it, all of these considerations have to go into that. But once we're talking about Malawi, you know, East Africa, Uganda, uh, you know, the Ethiopians taught the world how to drink coffee. Mm. Yeah. And uh, this is uh, an Ethiopian, you know, a uh, uh, drink and uh, beverage. And uh, they've been, you know, the priest over there, they, they were using it, you know, to try to stay awake, you know, to do work, you know, in, in, in the Orthodox uh, 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 Ethiopian Christianity system. Uh, you know, there's an angle there. The, the whole world drinks coffee today, and that's a huge, huge, huge market. You know, uh, and so there are a lot of uh, you know, people to the farm buy some, you know, try to market it 
all the way to when it reaches the shelf. You know, uh, there's also a market for, you know, once we're talking, people are, you know, more conscious about their health today uh, than they were previously. So people are looking for whole grains. So uh, there's a, another crop in, in Ethiopia and in East Africa called teff. Uh, you know, a very highly sought after grain, you know, uh, that, you know, is selling well on the global market, uh, you know. So there are, there are a lot of these uh, crops, you know, that people can essentially go and invest in you know, and, uh, you know, make a profit off of it. You're wrong with that, you see. Uh, so if we, we, like, think business, like, importing and exporting, we, we have to, you know, really work, work it out and make the projections, you see, so that we, we don't get stuck halfway. Right. Yeah, so that that's that's my uh, advice. But uh, people are doing a lot of uh, uh, import. Apparently, all that matters is you're uh, you're starting to break up a little bit. Only people buy, for instance. Yeah, am I breaking? Hello. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go. You're breaking up a little bit. We're good. Go ahead. Yeah, so some people are buying, for instance, people will buy coffee beans here and they have a, a plant, say, in America. Then they can, they can sell their own finished product, you see, and, and, and all of that. So uh, it depends on the extent to which you want to go. Uh, if you want to supply to... Uh, you know, a factory concern, or you want to, uh, you know, follow through and 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 make sure it becomes a finished product. So that's that's uh, some aspect of it, you see. But one reason we are concentrating on the one dollar program, and in in our Bible, there's nothing else but that, is that. We have gotten tired of hearing all these nice business plans and no money to fund them. Mm. You see, because every day people people think out you know great 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 plans, but then you try to raise the funds, it becomes a problem. So we are making the raising of the funds the central rather than a side, you know, issue. The funds is the main thing. And once we have that, then, you know, the financing of business ideas will follow. We, 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 we are planning for the money first. Mm. And, and not, not the other way around because it's, it's, it's very frustrating uh, to hash uh, business ideas and, and not, you know, have to see them you know, come into fruition. They, they, they end up, you know, on the shelf and gather dust. So there, there's no point in, in doing that. You know, we, we have to concentrate on smart ways to raise money first. Right. What we're trying to do with this $1 project is we're making a lot of projections and uh, we're, we're trying to keep pushing because uh, uh, the, 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 the Ghanaian population population is, you know, almost 28 million and we're targeting 10 million at, at peak performance. Mm -hmm. And if we keep pushing and, and in a month, we reach out to 10 million Ghanaians, then that's $10 million. Right. Let, let, let me ask you this. Um, a brother from Goriga wants to know, as far as the $1 plan, do you want to do another video on this or expand on it now as far as how it works, uh, you know, basically the objective of it? Or do you want to do another video on that? Because that could be a... 
depend on it. That, that, that's partly why I wanted to do the economy thing. Okay, is, go, ahead. Uh, go, go, you know, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead and expand on it. Uh, you know, not to backtrack a lot. I, I give the background on how how some of us arrived at this point is, you know, just from the frustration of not seeing our business ideas materialize. Mm -hmm. Because you know, the, 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 the money is just not there. You go to a bank, you want a loan to do business, they ask you for a house as collateral. You don't right. have a house. You don't. Right. And, and, and the interest rates are just cutthroat. You know, people will give you 30%, 40% interest, and, and they want the money back in a year. Right. They, they don't want to give you money to pay back in like four or five years. They want it back in just one year. You see, so all of these bottlenecks in, in the capital market it made it, you know, impossible for a lot of, uh, especially young people, to start their businesses and what have you. Secondly, uh, we, we noticed that uh, Africans, you know, worldwide are being, were being, you know, hoodwinked mm. into you know, embracing this uh, small business idea. I'm not saying small business is bad, but I'm saying that that is not the only way to go. Okay. You see? And uh, we, we think that... Uh, with the market in Africa, Africa is a huge, huge, huge market. Mm. With the market in Africa, uh, if the, the youth, you know, or an African group owned a big concerns, big business, uh, they would be able to make a profit and they would make big profit. And, and this profit would then go into helping other smaller businesses to come up. Uh, it would also go into social projects such as uh, building, you know, school facilities, uh, educational facilities, health facilities, uh, water and sanitation facilities, you know, and what have you. And, and, and basically to build a, 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 a pan-African society mm -hmm. because as we discussed earlier our educational system is not pro-african wow. we're going to have to build a model school and we're going to have to take time to experiment with a lot of teaching uh, styles a lot of uh you know methods and methodologies of teaching and learning and so on and a lot of research is needed in africa we don't research. We depend on uh, other people right. to do our research. And then we take the, the results and we make a claim. Right. No, we, we keep doing that. Now, all of these problems, we need money to, uh, to uh, start them. You know, we need a, a research, uh, an, an eminent research group that concentrates on African research alone, and they must make a living off of this. You see, if we want to take it serious, then it has to be a job for somebody, and he's going to have to be able to raise his family on that, on that alone as a job. So we're going to, the other day we were, you know, in relation to that, we were talking about, uh, you know, how we need to use our culture, you know, as an economic tool. Uh, right. If you, if you have, you know, we have African paintings. Mm, I have, I have plenty know. of them and art. Exactly. Now, mm. all of these, the people making these, these, these things, if we want to sustain it, then they're going to have to be making enough to support themselves. Right. Otherwise, they'll stop. You see, it has to be a job. And for it to be a job, there has to be a market for these products. And uh, for there to be a market, our children have to be oriented to think highly of these artifacts. And the orientation is going to have to come from the basic level in the schools. You see? So if we 
train our children to, for instance, uh, uh, grow up loving, you know, African cinema, African stories. If, if they're airing uh, an, an African, you know, story or movie, they're going to want to go and see it. Right. And, 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 and this then creates, you know, the economic base for continuity. And, and the person who produced the movie and all of the characters that were in the movie are going to benefit from this. Basically, what I'm saying is we are going to need money to set up all of these organizations and to make them self-sustaining. And in order for all of this to happen, we've got to start somewhere. All operations are uh, what led to our coming to fashion out to raise money. And we, we, we looked at several uh, uh, models and so on and so forth. And uh, we settled on this because it, it, it really depends on now is for us to talk to the African community and in yes. order to convince in order to convince them, we're going to have to present a very strong case. And I am positive because the African community is not, it's not necessarily, yeah, we may not be, not all of us are conscious enough, but we know what the struggle is because we live it. You see? Yeah. And because we live it, all we need is somebody to come along and help us to understand why we are in our current position or situation. And if we're able to do that, then we create the platform to then launch the solution in the form of this $1 project. And uh, how it works is we're basically, you know, the youth, We, we are the majority. Uh, now, we want to split it, split our pick Ghana, for instance. We'll have uh, several constituencies across, dotted across the country. Uh, we're in the process of talking to uh, university students uh, and people in the educational institutions, talking to all of them and, and to uh, imbibe in them to to take this on and, and let us keep pushing it. And so these people uh, essentially will help to facilitate the collection and uh, uh, education as far as how far it's going and so on, you see. But we want to use innovative means to collect this money. Uh, for instance, we have in Ghana uh, mobile money. Mm -hmm. So people people can you know make a payment using the mobile money. Yeah, that's like make a uh, in in Kenya they have uh, M-Pesa. Mm, yeah, it's the same idea. We we can have that. Uh, people can make a deposit into a designated account. Uh, you know, and then at the end of each month, then we make it publicly known that we as a group of people, young people, have been able to raise this much. Right. And uh, we have a, a whole other discussion about where to put the money in the best way to, you know, you. And our primary focus is telecom, like I was saying the other time, because this is a very uh, a multi-billion dollar industry you know, that doesn't seem to run out of steam because people communicate all the time. Right. See, and so, yeah, we would uh, look into uh, either buying shares uh, in that area or, you know, starting a rival company. Yes, absolutely. I know someone in the chat room said that uh, infrastructure um, projects would be, uh, I think it's something that's more important or is a great importance somebody in the chat was just talking about that so telecom definitely yeah. uh, infrastructure related yeah, definitely uh but you see the idea is to put it into business that has a, a short 
you know, incubation period. So you don't uh, lock money up, you know, and, uh, you know, not get much out of it. So all of those considerations are there. We can even own a bank, you know, to loan, to loan money out, you know, uh, because this is a continuous thing. Uh, if like at the target of 10 million people, you know, that's, that's our conservative figure that like, we think that's the highest we'll ever get 10 million. Uh, if you take that and you multiply it by one year, you have $120,000 million, you know, uh, so th th significantly that, that can, uh, be a major game changer. You see, and now we can begin to talk about establishing the institutions, about, mm. you know, paying, you know, for research and using the research, you know, to better uh, our knowledge, which will then enhance our decision making uh, uh, and, and what have you. It is all doable. All we have to do is to keep pushing the idea and to keep getting people to buy into it. You know, thankfully, the last time we talked, I got uh, quite a number of uh, calls from people even in Ghana and some wow. Ghanaians even living in Yeah, and, and some Ghanaians living in, uh, in America. You wow. Know, you know, they, they linked me up. Yeah, they linked me up and said, you know, we, we need to, you know, get it going and so on. Uh, so, and... Uh, you know, it's pretty. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, once the people uh, buy into the idea and they see what the benefit is, because the benefit is collective. You see, the benefit is collective, and people can have a, a history, you know, a payment history that they can refer to, you know, and, and so on. It, it's it's all doable, you know. In in look in just two, three, maybe five years. If, if we're doing this in Africa and you're doing it over there, in just the space of about five years, we, we would have over, you know, a billion dollars. Mm. That can do significant, significant investment. You know, because we need to own, we need to own the means of production. Absolutely. And we can run it because all we need is to uh, ship, send some of our people, uh, wherever the best training is, they get the best training, they come back, they're paid well, they have the incentive to do their job. If they don't do their job, they're fired. Mm. You see? Yeah, because we, we, we have to uh, stick to business ethics. Because if you're paid to do a job, you, you have to do it. You see? And all of that. So it's, 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 it's all in the pipeline. It's all doable. I don't, I don't see why we, we need to, we're still begging. Okay. Hey, there's a, there's a That's question. Uh, Chima has a question. Have the, um, have the people in, are the names into cryptocurrency yet? Um, are you familiar with that? Oh, You're need? talking about Bitcoin. Yes, correct. Yes. Yeah, well, it's it's now catching on. It's it's, it's a new phenomenon. Okay. A lot of people are skeptical about it. Uh, so it's it's going to have to you know take some time before you know people you know are comfortable with it. Okay. Not it's not it's not uncommon. It's just a new phenomenon. People are watching carefully. <laughs> I mean, do you See, think it's something that? I mean, do you think it's something that is, I guess, I, I don't want to use the word scam, but I mean, do you think it's something that we should take into consideration as far as utilizing or is it something that... Yeah, yeah for me, for me, you see, everything is, everything is useful depending on how we look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I uh, studied it about uh, some of some of our people are familiar with it. Uh, I, I've read uh, China. China went into it, you know, and and for for some reason they they're dropping a lot of it now. 
no. So I don't know what's 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 up with that because people are going to be watching and they're going to ask if it's so good and why is China, you know, mm -hmm. stepping back. So that's that's worth looking into. You see, uh, but as far as benefits, obviously, uh, if if it's carefully uh, uh, looked at, planned, and I know that North Korea also makes use of it. Uh, yeah, so uh, the the research, uh, I can't speak on it because I've not done the research, but what I know from uh, global events is that uh, some countries have tried it and they seem to be stepping away from it. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I don't know much about it. I've been watching it, but all I know is people who buy big Bitcoin, Bitcoin maybe five years ago are now filthy rich. I know that for a fact, but I just mm. don't know how it's going to play out. So, uh, mm. Yeah, so it's a trend. Uh, we're going to have to monitor the trend carefully because normally uh, how some of these uh, uh, scams happen is uh, the first people who go into it and Ponzi schemes, the first people who go in raking big and, and this kind of brings a wave of people into it and, uh, you know, they also want to cash out big and, and so on. So, you know, we're going to have to look at it very carefully and, and, and understand how it works. I, I, I'll, I'll dig into it a bit, but uh, I just think that uh, if you're investing, one has to be very careful. Uh, right. There are a lot of elaborate out there, you know, and uh, one, one, problem with this bitcoin thing is you know it's intangible and so people people are going to want some security or guarantee right how, how do they you know hold some something or somebody accountable that's it that's the issue you see so you know and ghana has been rocked by some of these scams uh some of uh these uh ponzi schemes Several, several, several of them. So, Ghanaians are very skeptical okay. about this sort of uh, investment. People want the tangible things that they can, you know, see and hold, and and they can lay claim to. You know, people are very cautious with uh, where they invest, but it, it's worth looking into. I. I I have not given it the time that it deserved. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So essentially, uh, we—I don't know what it, what it is we're waiting for, but we have the ability uh, 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 to 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 change our situation. Most people in America, I know, African Americans, can afford a dollar a month. So if 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 uh, we put together uh, the, the the message and 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 present it in a uh, elaborate and, and easy to understand way, uh, and we keep at it, I think that eventually people are going to see that it is our responsibility to change our situation. And one way we can do it is to put our little money together and it becomes big money and we you know, become, you know, uh, uh, respected because we also own big business. Right. And, and we, you know, we own a, a telecom, uh, 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 company. We own our, our oil refinery. We, we're, we're manufacturing and, and, and we we're doing business, big business. And, and those are, that's the only people who have respect in the world people who run business right so, so, so right, there, um, i was going to say this everybody who um sh showed up this morning thank you for uh, mm -hmm. uh thank you for coming on and joining me and brother Oweenie. Uh, i have to get i have to pick up my son and take him to his uh soccer game so Oweenie, i'll let you go ahead and close out uh, anything that you want to share or, or say in closing uh, the floor is yours 
Yeah, uh, so I, I want to thank everybody. Today has been interactive. Uh, it's always good to have people in the chat room asking questions and contributing. Uh, that's, uh, that's good because it, it's, it's always about dialogue. And so uh, let's keep supporting uh, the little businesses uh, that we know uh, because that's the best thing to do for ourselves. And those little, little things, those are the ones that add up to become big. And uh, let's keep pushing the, the $1 uh, project. Uh, and uh, we, as time goes on, we would uh, enroll people onto it and so that people can you know, see how it works. And it's all about us. It's, it's our money and everybody has access to it. There's no secrecy in it. And people accusing others of and what have you, all of that has to be thrown out because we will have a very open system. Anybody can, you know, uh, know how much is is been raised and what steps we are taking to invest and what have you. Uh, this this negative mindset that we can't trust ourselves. Okay. All right, cool. And everybody, again, thank you for coming on. Oh, Weedy, um, share, make sure you share your contact information. Tell people where they can reach out to you. And also, I'll put your information in the, uh, in the okay. description box as well. Yeah, so uh, you can reach me on uh, my cell phone. I'm on WhatsApp. Uh, you know, these days, WhatsApp is, you know, is, is very easy to use. And some, I understand it's like some... It's not, a, it's not as big in America, right? Oh, WhatsApp is huge out here. Okay, okay, so that's good. So you can reach me on WhatsApp uh, on plus two, 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 three, three, three. That's the Ghana code plus two, three, three, uh, two, four, nine, eight, three, one, two, five, one. That's plus two, three, three, two, four, nine, eight, two, five, one. Uh, send me in. Okay. All right, cool. And everybody, uh, please thank uh, you. That's who I, Bob. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So, awini baba at gmail dot com. Awini a w i n i baba b a b a uh, at gmail dot com. One word. So, thanks for having me on. We'll talk right, later. No and guys, please uh, thank you. If you're new, please subscribe. Um, I, I, uh, from Gariga, I'm going to put all his contact information. Um, in fact, I just put his email in the chat room. So we need Baba at gmail.com. Uh, again, thank you, everybody, for coming on. If you're new, please subscribe. Uh, make sure you go to um, search for whoever.com. Make sure you go to dinosamir.com. Uh, make sure you go to amazon.com. Search your name, Dinosamir. Please. Uh, buy a book. Also on social media, search for Huru on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Again, people, thank you so much for coming on. Till next time, peace.